Can you see that? Oh, sh**. Why exactly do gemstones look like, well, that? I have here a couple boxes, about a hundred gemstones graciously on loan to me from the museum. I wanna take you guys on a little visual tour of the really beautiful optical properties of these gems. And as we go through those properties, I'm going to just explain a little bit of the physics behind how those properties arise. And ultimately we're getting to an answer about why gems look the way they do. Why do they have that sparkle? As you're learning about these things, about gemology, it really helps to just see them in person. And you can actually understand a lot about the properties of these gems just by looking at them directly. Most gemstones are very hard and crystalline materials. So they have this repeating crystal lattice structure in how its atoms are arranged. But this is in contrast to something like glass, like an amorphous solid, which doesn't have a lattice or any kind of repeating arrangement of its atoms. It's this crystal structure that is responsible for a lot of these unique optical properties in gemstones. I would say the two most important features that give rise to the brilliance, in other words, these like flashes of light, one is that a lot of gems have a high refractive index, and two is just simply the way that the stone is cut. So the refractive index of a material refers to how much that material slows down light, or equivalently, how much it bends light. And the refractive index is actually defined in terms of the speed of light in vacuum divided by the speed of light in the material. So for example, diamond has a refractive index that's about two, and that means that light is literally going half its normal speed when it's traveling through diamond. Pretty crazy. Light going from air into water or water into air bends. That bending of light is the reason you get these type of illusions or it's, it, it also has to do with the the path that the light is taking to reach your eye. You as an observer are not you know, independent from this situation. You can actually see the refractive index of a material just by looking at it. In gemstones that have a lower refractive index, you can see more directly through the stone. In the high refractive index stones, you're seeing light that's bouncing off the interior more. So the second property that's responsible for this brilliance or this flashes of light in the stone is simply the cut. Over time, lapidaries, people that cut stones have figured out how to precisely cut a stone so that it reflects back the maximum amount of light. If you're a little bit off with that cut, you can get this donutting effect where the light actually just passes straight through and exits out the bottom of the stone so you can see through the stone. If the stone is cut properly, what you are seeing when you look into a stone is light that has been reflected multiple times off the interior surfaces. When you're looking into a stone, you're kind of seeing like the walls of the stone. You're seeing, it's like walking into a house of mirrors. Another effect that they talk about in the gem trade is fire, flashes of like rainbow light. And fire is caused by a phenomenon known as dispersion. The idea is that like white light is actually a mixture of many different wavelengths of light, different colors. These different wavelengths are refracted by different amounts. For example, the purple light gets bent by more than the red light. And so you get this spreading out of the colors and that allows you to see the rainbow. And so dispersion is actually a quantity that is measured in terms of the difference between the maximum and the minimum refractive index. When they measure refractive index of a material, they measure it at some particular wavelength. So certain gem materials have very high levels of dispersion. Thank you. 
My personal favorite is moissanite, which uh, not only has like a refractive index that's higher than diamond, but it has more dispersion than diamond. One way that you tell moissanite from diamond is look for those rainbow lights popping out. Each one of these stones belongs to one of a few different crystal systems. A crystal system refers to the way that the atoms are arranged in the lattice geometrically. Diamond, for example, has this very regular tetrahedral structure. It's considered an isometric material because the light moves equally the same in all directions. But there are some crystal systems, for example, the uniaxial and biaxial systems, which have this property called double refraction. They basically have two refractive indices in the same material. When light enters these doubly refractive materials, it will be split into two polarized rays. A very strongly doubly refractive material is uh, calcite. You can see what happens when you, when you look through it and you get this like double vision effect. It's possible to see double refraction happening through a phenomenon called facet doubling. When you actually look into a stone like zircon, you can see two copies of the facet. The second effect that can arise is that in some of these doubly refractive materials, you can have something called dichroism or generally pleochroism it's called. The color that you are seeing in the stone is dependent on the angle of view. The color that you see is like the transmitted light, the light that's kind of not being absorbed. The, the wavelengths that are being absorbed are different depending on the direction of travel. So you're, you end up seeing different colors, two, two or more different colors present in the same stone. There's a whole bunch of other weird effects like the cat's eye, um, it's called chatoyancy. There's something called asterism, where you get like a star of chatoyancy. There's like aventurescence, uh, iridescence. Opal is, is not actually a crystal structure. It's like a, I think it's an amorphous solid. There's a whole host of other physical properties like the density, you know, the carat weight, all these things that kind of matter when you're, you're going in and testing gemstones. Yeah, you, you, you may wonder like, how did they know that they're getting a real blank. They have a set of very precise characteristics that they're looking for and they have instruments, gemological instruments to test and see does it, you know, line up? Does it have that particular set of, of optical and physical characteristics? And that's how you can validate, you know, whether the stone is what you think it is. I hope this inspires you to go out there and learn more about gemology and now you will know next time you see a, a stone in a jewelry store a little bit more about about why it behaves that way. So thank you so much for listening. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.